G'day guys, what's cracking? It's Ralph here. Thanks so much for joining me. And today we're looking at the DJI Action 2. And I was going to put it right here, but I don't have it because I was totally convinced to buy it. And now I'm not very convinced. And this video is about why. It's going to give you the ins and outs of the camera so you can see uh, if it's something you might want to uh, add to your kit and something whether you need because I've watched a ton of the videos that have been out already and there's gaps in all of them and I hope this will be a comprehensive overview which will answer some of the questions you had because there were questions I had that may be able to make an informed opinion so if you'd like to subscribe to the channel as you go through and you're thinking yeah this guy this is get it going on come on get on to it hit subscribe you can join the channel if you like and give me a thumbs up i'd be stoked with that the sensor on this camera is a 1 slash 1.7 inch sensor that means it's slightly bigger than what it previously was in the osmo one and it's also bigger than what it is in the GoPro 10. That means you get better quality underwater in certain low light complexities, it'll be improved and there'll be better tones in the coloring. So if you're wondering what an extra little bit of sensor size gives you on an action cam, well, that's it. The aperture on the lens is f2.8, which is pretty standard these days for all those action cameras. I've talked about that in the past. Its field of view is 155 degrees. That is super wide, super wide. However, it warps massively on the edges. And my question is, do I, do I need something that's so wide? Now it has ultra wide and wide and standard, which I'm stoked about. I was really happy that they have those options that you can still maintain video resolution. But that ultra wide, I, I don't like fisheye. I don't like things bent. I like it straight. And it would just constantly be a headache in post and you'd lose some of the stuff anyway. So it wasn't, wasn't like, didn't tip me over the line. They say it's the size of an egg, which is 64 grams. The camera itself is 56 grams, so it's lighter than an egg, or maybe just like a baby egg, or a lightweight egg, or a quail egg, or a duck egg, or something. Anyway, I digress. So it's light, it's super light, it's super small, it looks super cool, um, and it's got the bare necessities that you need for a camera. The screen on the back is a 1.7 inch screen, so it gives you plenty of real estate on the back. But basically, it's the same size as the screen and the border around the screen of a GoPro 10. Yep, it's tiny and quite brilliant. But I remember a tiny screen on the Insta 361R drives me insane it's too small so let's talk about resolution it shoots 4k at 120 frames a second it shoots 2.7k at 120 frames a second and it shoots 1080p at 240 frames a second that's good right it does everything else in between you can check all the specs if you think does it do 35 frames a second probably not its stabilization is rock steady 2.0 and the evidence i've seen so far is that it's not rock solid it's rock steady uh that only works on resolutions under 100 frames a second as well so keep that in mind if you want to do super slow-mo a rock steady won't work with that it also has horizon leveling but not to the degree of 45 degrees that the GoPro 10 has so basically when you get to about here it starts to to shift um, and that would be a, a key indicator because what you don't want is it shifting halfway through you don't want to be like here and it holds and then you go a bit more and you boink and your whole image is out so obviously that needs some development but the stabilization in action cameras these days especially in dji because they are the gimbal people they are the stabilization people is um is quite amazing however it needs some work and i'm a bit surprised that dji who are the stabilization people didn't come to the party strongly on that but the grievance people have with the GoPro 10 is it overheats and catches on fire. It hasn't yet, but that'll be exciting when that happens. And there's been a number of videos where, where users have put this camera to the test and they've put it at 4K at 120 frames a second and it's it's overheated at five minutes. Like overheated at five minutes. And, and I know GoPro say about their cameras that the maximum average length of a, of a shot is a, a minute 10. I don't use action cameras that way. I think if you're going mountain bike riding or you're going uh, hang gliding or whatever, you want to turn it on, you're going underwater, you want to turn it on, you want it to run for, for 30 minutes, for 40 minutes. And so it's really, um, it's quite a challenge uh, when it comes to that. So, so overheating, right? At five minutes at 4K, nine minutes at 4K, six 
60 frames a second and 28 to 35 minutes at 4K and 30 frames a second. And we're not even talking like the high res that GoPro um, have managed to do. So it has much more severe overheating issues, it would appear, than the GoPro 10, which is a really challenge. That makes sense because everything's crammed into this tiny, tiny, tiny camera. However, why cram everything into a tiny camera if it's not going to work when you really need it to work if you're relying on it. I know a ton of people with the GoPro um, new edition say it's really frustrating because once it's in a case and you go underwater, you can't, you're at the mercy of the elements and it overheats really quickly. They're going to have this problem really significantly with the, um, the DJI Action 2, I would imagine. Also has no lens replacement. So you smash that lens, you got to take it back. And I don't think it would take much to actually have just something you, you screw on the thing, like really slim line, really nice, but it's not part of the getup, which is quite frustrating. And there'll be a lot of people that will be frustrated when they smash their camera because it's an action camera. So you should use it for action. Uh, and yeah, it, it'll be frustrating for people, I think. It's well supported by the Mimo app. So you can actually watch your footage live as you're taking it, which is one of the challenges on some of the other action cameras. So it's a live pre view um, really really helpful especially if you want to set up a shot or you want to see how a shot's going once it's um, taking place and once it's it's rolling out and it takes stills it takes 12 megapixel stills I read somewhere they said 48 megapixel but DJ are convinced it's only 12 megapixel there's no way it can be 48 megapixel <laughs> like that's it's ridiculous and you don't even need it to take stills it's kind of handy that it does but who hasn't got their phone they could just whip out and bang off a shot and boom we're away to go and you get much better results on that than you would on stills on an action camera but it does shoot raw and raw is helpful because it gives you more editing um, abilities later on has your classic time lapse functions which are really really great so you can do a whole host of things with the time lapse but it doesn't have a night lapse function and you can use time lapse at night. I'm not sure the quality and how well it's going to go, but on the GoPro 10, you have this night lapse function, which is epic because it strings together lights and it just, you automatically, you put it on auto because if you go half a second, it doesn't quite work. So you go auto and the camera manages to use its brain <laughs> to, to make these epic street shots and this cool light maneuvering and stuff, which you don't get with the action too. Let's talk about waterproof. Now, as you would have known by now, if you've seen any other reviews, the little modular by itself, the lens modular is waterproof and you stick anything else to it and it stops being waterproof. And here's one of my other problems with it. You're in the spare of the moment. The kids are jumping in the pool. You're like, I want to go in the surf. Oh, there's some great opportunities here. And you forget and you drown your entire camera because you forget to detach it and just take this. Plus you've only got 32 gigabytes. And so if it's you've been shooting all day, you've been mucking about or all week and you've been cramming stuff into this 32 gig that's internally built and then you want to do something underwater, you, oh, what do you do? You've got to take all the stuff off. You've got to reformat it. You've got to go again as opposed to pulling out a card and slamming in another card. That's a real challenge. And especially if you've got another mod on it that you've been relying on that card because you're 32 two gig is full the way I use cameras I tend to my action cameras is I'll tend to fill them up well past 32 gigs in order to uh, capture different things throughout a day or throughout a shoot or I'll put a time lapse on or I'll shoot some video and just stick it in a corner somewhere that I can use later on and 32 gigs is quite a limitation on that now you can mount it, which is awesome. It's got these cool magnetic mounts. Some of the magnetic mounts, especially on the lanyard, look a little bit dicey, like it could just pop off. And there is um, plenty of footage of that happening already. Uh, so maybe the magnet could be stronger, but magnets are really cool. And that's definitely a way of a future. The two modulars stick together via magnets, which you, you gotta love, right? Who doesn't love a magnet? Plus they've got the clamps. So that thing can just like lock in like the jaws of a Leviathan and you're never gonna get that sucker off. It's like unleash the crack and, like, <laughs> and you, you just never separate it so uh, that's really cool but again um you're you're then tied to have to use dji's um specific magnet mounts as they come out and as they are developed and there's a number of accessories that come with the camera and also that you can buy separately later on but we'll get to that in just a jiffy you can put this camera in a waterproof case, which is super cool. And so you can keep those other mods on it and you can use it that way, providing you remember to take the mod with you. That case costs 65 US dollars. So that's quite reasonable, I would I would say, especially that you can take it down to like 60 meters. Um, that's that's insane. And basically 10 meters just for the uh, the single mod itself. 
Now the extra mods that you stick on, they have a USB slot that you can put uh, up to a 256 gigabyte um, card into. Um, and I think that's the, it's definitely the case with the battery. I'm pretty sure it's the case with the uh, screen mod as well. In fact, if it wasn't, I think there would be absolute outrage. Uh, and you, you just slap that on and through these like eight magnetic, like <laughs> it just manages to make it work. It's pretty incredible. I think one of the limitations is that the screen is a front facing screen, which means it's great for vloggers. And we'll talk about audio in just a minute. It's great for vloggers, but you can't turn it round and then use it on the back as a larger screen. It would be cool if you could just flip it around and it would take the single screen into a double screen, a large screen for previewing and for for moving around. And we know the technology is out there because there's certain phones that do that, but it's it just seems like they've they've missed the great opportunity there, but perhaps that would increase the price even more and we'll get to the price and some of those determining factors um, in a moment. Let's talk about microphones. If you um, just take the lens mod, it's got a single microphone in there. If you add the screen module to it, it adds another three microphones giving you a stereo output. It has USB-C plug on on both the modules, so the ex extra modules that you put on, whether it's the power or the screen, so you can charge, and you can also put on a microphone kit. Now, DJI have developed a wireless microphone kit that's coming out that's $329. These are all US dollars, by the way. It's nearly the price of the camera for a wireless mic, and you can't still put a microphone jack in. Now, could somebody please explain like seriously, down below in the comments, what the deal is with that. Is it that they can't do it or they just won't do it and they're squeezing money out of people? They've built this camera so that it's friendly to vloggers, only to say, but not that friendly. Now, the onboard microphones, the all four of them are pretty good when it comes to wind, noise, and quality of audio. And so there's a few videos out there that you go, oh, gee, that's, that's really impressive for what it is, knowing what action cameras usually um, are struck down with when it comes to uh, audio quality uh, straight out of camera. So let's talk about battery life, and it's a bit vague. There's a bunch of different opinions out there, but let me let me talk about what I can gain so far. So the, the lens module by itself will give you about 70 minutes. That's massive. Now that's at 1080p and 24 frames a second. The... Um, the unit, when you shoot at 4K and 30 frames a second, will give you about half that time, 35 minutes. If you put the power mod on, you'll get to use the battery in the lens mod and the power mod, and that gives you 180 minutes, according to DJI, at 1080p, 30 frames. And the same resolution, if you put the screen on, will give you 160 minutes. So you could buy the screen and not really worry about the power mod. However, um, it, it may be worth buying the power mod as an extra, backup battery. So let's talk about some of the, the extras that you can buy with this camera that don't come with the camera, but you've got to buy with the camera. You can get a macro lens, which looks epic and awesome, um, but I've also got it on my iPhone 13 Pro Max. And when it comes to video, you don't use that a lot because there's, there's too much shake in it. But that's $79. If that's your thing, there might be a specific need that that would be really helpful for. You can get a remote control extension tripod selfie stick thing, which costs $75 and looks really cool. Again, that would be for um, vlogging and those sort of shots or where you don't want to don't want to be near the camera, but want to have it to go. Uh, but you could also use just a normal tripod and the app on the phone to achieve that. There's other mount ranges from 25 to 39. You can stick it on your head and do a whole host of other things with it. Um, and you can get another power mod separately for $75, which actually seems pretty okay because you're buying an extra battery for 75 bucks. And usually battery costs about that, doesn't it? I think, think it does. In the box, you get a magnetic pendant with the magnets. So basically put the pendant under your shirt and the camera on your front and you're good to go. It's creative, but I just wouldn't use it. I just don't use that point of view shooting for anything. And if I have to, it's when I'm hiking, I've got my bag on and I just clip it on to here. And even if you're doing um, point of view photography, you just clip it on your front or you put a chest mount on. So maybe it makes it a little bit easier, a little bit neater, but not enough of a reason to actually buy the camera for me that is you get a magnetic tripod mount, you get a charging cable, and there's a couple of other mounts. Um, and so I stay up last night. I stay up to watch this. I'm on a live feed with Danny Black. That was a lot of fun. Uh, I was, you could tell I was pumped for the video, right? Pumped for it because when the Ronin 4D came out, they, they did that sublimely well. So 11 p.m. rolls around and they show the most underwhelming action cam video I've seen. And just like, it's just another action cam, like... Pfft. 
come on, I thought they were going to walk us through. I thought we were going to make a big effort, a big deal of it. So it's interesting that they didn't. And basically, I started till 11 p.m. It was awesome to talk with Danny, and you should go over and check out his channel. Uh, but I'm, I'm just, I'm just hanging out there, going, that was just not worth it. And then, obviously, all the cameras have been sent to all these creators, and then all the videos drop. And so then I spent a little bit more time just looking at them, and should have got some sleep because. So I'm making this before nine o'clock, and I have to make the decision whether I'm going to buy it or not. And I don't think I'm going to buy the action too. And I'll explain just a touch more of that in just a moment. So Linda asked me the question. She says, um, she goes, why? Why are you buying it? And blow me down. I couldn't come up with a good enough answer. Why am I buying it? It doesn't add enough to the creative desires and needs I have that my current gear doesn't give me. So, so it doesn't, it doesn't like, wow, blow the GoPro 10 away. Because what I was thinking is I'll buy the GoPro 10 and then I'll sell it and uh, just use the Action uh, 2. But I, I'm not convinced the Action 2 is for me. And I'm a DJ f I fan, right? You know I'm like so keen for this camera. I was a bit gutted last night. I was just like, what? Like, uh, underwhelmed, very underwhelmed. I bought the uh, Insta360 One R when it first came out, and uh, I quickly got frustrated that there were all these little bits and pieces that you had to, you couldn't just grab the camera. You had like a battery thing you had to add on, make sure that was charged, and make sure the card was in there, and make sure your mods were on. And it was just, uh, just modular cameras. Like, unless you've got a really good storage space where everything goes that's custom made, which they doesn't seem like they have one yet, that that's super frustrating for me. So does it, do for me what my current gear can't do? No, not yet. Should I buy it? What do you think? You're kind of hearing my opinion. What do you think? Should I buy it? Would it? Uh, would you benefit massively from me buying it and having a look at it and a play with it? I, I don't know. Let me know in the comments below and let me know if I've got anything wrong. You think, hang on, what about this? And what about that? Or to add anything. That's what our comments are for. Can we can have a good chat about all of that stuff down below. Um, I think this camera is the first generation of what in five to ten years time will be the stable for action cameras. But it's ahead of its time. And I think the reason it's ahead of its time is because we haven't found unique uses for it. And so far on the stuff that we've seen, we haven't seen unique uses. And people say it's got magnetic backing. You can stick it on metal. I don't know if you've ever used anything with magnetic backing, but there's a couple of challenges with that. First is there's not a lot of metal services around that you can use to stick that on um, and get different shots. Then those metal services are very rarely exactly where you want them and flat enough that the shot it gives you as a result is a clean, good, well-framed shot. So while it's like, wow, that's really exciting, when you think about it practically, um, it kind of breaks down unless you live in an aluminium factory. And then I'll give it to you. Not the camera, I'll give you the point that it's probably a good idea to get it. I don't know, is, that, is aluminium even magnetic? I don't know, I don't care. I, I'm, I'm Let's get back on, on task. I'm coming to the end, folks. So you think, oh, it's smaller. It can do a bunch of stuff. But the uh, Insta360 Go is tiny and incredible when it comes to that kind of versatility. So again, it doesn't quite move into that mark. Obviously, they're hoping to appeal to the DJI audience because DJI make incredible products. I love DJI and I still will be committed to them. I'm just a little bit underwhelmed by this product. So let's get to the real reason that the kind of filters in why I have decided to for now not to buy this camera and the reason is the price it's 399 dollars for the power combo which is basically the the lens module and the power pack so just to have the main lens module with a opportunity to put more memory in and more battery which is a long time battery by the way when it comes to action cameras that it's 399 but to get the extra screen mod that's clipped in that gives you a bunch of a bunch of extra batteries as well as the SDD SD not STD capabilities that would be horrendous the SD capabilities is 519 US dollars that's 800 bucks over here that's astronomical like that's oh, I was the, paying seven fifty for the GoPro ten hurt. Paying eight hundred for the Osmo, for the DJI Action two, it's a deal breaker. I can't justify that much money for that, with the exception, 
and this may seem completely ridiculous to you, but if there's enough of you that like Ralph, I'd really like you to really buy it. It'd be super helpful for me because if you did and you did an honest review on what it did, or we look at the GoPro 10 and how it mounts to that, that would be really valuable and helpful for me. So if that is helpful, please say in the description below and I will listen to it because if you've listened all the way through to this part of the video, you're, um, you should become a subscriber if you're not already. And I really, really appreciate you. Oh, we're done. I'm sad. I, I, I was so pumped for this camera. I was so looking forward to it. I was so like, come on, game changer. So exciting and underwhelmed, which is fascinating because the reason I'm underwhelmed is because of all the creatives who made videos about this camera who were given the camera. And, and that none of them seem convinced that it's out of this world. They're all like, hey, it's cool. We've got to send a cool camera and here's some good things about it. Nothing wrong with that. But yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I really appreciate you. Um, and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And we'll catch you in the next video. Bye. I was giving you a studio um, <laughs> stereo. <laughs> stereo output, studio output. What's that? First mistake of the video. Um,